Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Before I start this uh, article, uh, I have to uh, remind you that uh, I feel sometimes I feel like when I'm playing in a team sports team with a team against another team, and uh, I look at the other team, and the other team has some very good players, like two or three, that I say, oh man, I wish those guys would be in my team. And I look at some of my uh, <clears throat> team members and I say, oh, man, can we swap? I would give you these guys and you guys can give me those guys. That's how I sometimes feel when I see one of the <clears throat> uh, officials uh, who represent who represent uh, United States, therefore represent me as well as a citizen, uh, and they go and deal with another, uh, uh, with a counterpart from a different country, good or bad, doesn't matter, I'm just saying a good country or bad country I'm talking and I'm looking at my guy and I'm like, oh my god this guy's gonna go and talk with those guys oh. that's how I feel about Mark Milley the chief of staff or something let me go and see the article so I can uh, tell you exactly uh, this guy's name and rank so this article comes from Reuters from May 19th 2022 and uh, this is a title top US and Russian generals speak for the first time since Ukraine invasion. All right, so this is not um, um, this is not Shoigu and uh, what's the other guy's name? Um, can't remember the, the, the other guy's name. Hmm. Uh, uh, Austin. So it's not Austin and Shoigu. This is our guy, US military of officer, General Mark Milley. Who spoke with Russia's chief of staff, Valery Gerasimov? I don't know Valery Gerasimov, but I know Mark Milley. So I know my my team members. I would just, hey, can you look for us on the other side of the river? Don't come back ever. So that's how it is. All right, the Pentagon said on Thursday. All right, the first conversation between the two since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February. The military leaders discussed several security related issues of concern and agreed to keep the lines of communication open, said a spokesman for Milley, the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chief of Staff. Wow! I tell you when this Milley fell uh, for me, uh, fell like done. When I saw him, I saw his testimony in front of a Senate commission in the United States, and he was talking about the white rage. And he talked, he said that he has that white rage and he's reading books regarding that so he can like calm down a white man's rage or something like that. Very insulting, I must say. And he was talking about uh, eradicating this, this, this terms that he, these terms that he used from the U.S. Army. Not getting them better, you know, doing what they do, killing people, that's the U.S. Army for. No, to make sure they're doing their job well with the enemies. No, but you have to make sure that they are, uh, you know, certain kind of people. You know what I mean? So that was one thing. And I said, what's going on with this one? And the other one, when uh, he called the same guy under President, uh, former President uh, Donald Trump, he called the Chinese counterpart and told him that if United States will do something, you know, it's going to let... You know, he's gonna move move in or something about uh, Taiwan or something. He's gonna let the Chinese counterpart know first, something like that. When I heard these two things, first I saw him how he speaks. I saw how he spoke, and that the, the, the and then I saw what what he talked about, and then the thing with the Chinese counterpart. I said, this guy is just, uh, it's just I don't know what he is. I don't know what he is. He's just a, I don't know. You can have him. You can have him. I don't want him. My God. And then in accordance with uh, past practice, the specific the details of the conversation will be kept private. The U.S. military readout did not mention any specific issues that were discussed. Uh, RIA news agency citing the Russian defense ministry said the two military leaders discussed issues of mutual interest, including Ukraine. The call took place after U.S. defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with his Russian counterpart last week, Shoigu, and the Pentagon chief called 
for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine. The United States and Russia have established a hotline since, since the invasion, which Moscow calls a special military operation. It's good that they communicate. Always good to communicate. Even if you yell at one another, if you even if you call your names, communicate. And then that tone will go down and, uh, you know, de-escalate it. But even if it's like that, communication should not be broken. Once it's broken, it's worse than calling names. Um, not only me saying that, but anyway, studies, uh, communicative studies, psychological, social, blah, 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 blah. All right. So the the confliction hotline, the deconfliction hotline is an open phone line based at the European Command's headquarters in Stuttgart, Germany, Stuttgart, Mercedes, yes, and falls under Air Force General Todd Volters, who leads the U.S. forces in Europe. Speaking in Brussels on Thursday, Volters Vol said he hopes the call between Milly and Gerasimov was one step closer to a diplomatic solution in Ukraine. I hope that's too. I hope that too. Um, so, as I said, good people communicate. Uh, uh, they pick up the phone for one another. That's great. Um, I will see if anything else. I, I don't know if this is all of it because it seems like there's another big, big uh, player in here. I know, you know, the Hades, uh, Hades, Hades uh, in, uh, in the Greek mythology, uh, the, the god of death and son, Hades, that's how it's pronounced, I don't know, in English, Hades, I think, Hades, 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 oh my god, Hades, you know, had that dog with three uh, heads, the Cerberus, Cerberus, I think that's how you would say it in English, I think it's, so, uh, Hades, not that it's a bad thing, it's just an analogy, uh, would be the United States and the Cerberus would be the Great Britain. So uh, I don't know if there's no insult uh, uh, meant here. I will let you know when I want to insult someone or some country. I would just say this and this and this. In this case, no, it's just an analogy. So um, unfortunately or fortunately, not, I don't know how to put it. Uh, United States spoke with the Russians, but they didn't speak with the Cerberus, with, uh, with the Great Britain, who seems to be up to its neck in Ukraine. Uh, it's, I think it's even deep, deeper in Ukraine than the United States is, or uh, maybe the Great Britain because it's closer. Uh, it, uh, it's, um, it's the field operational unit that, or the, the, the command unit, the field operational unit, command unit right there. And you are somewhere like 3000 miles away and you just call, hey, um, what's going on, Boris? Boris? Oh, I don't know, man, I don't know. Um, Joseph, I don't know what, what to do. Not Joseph Stalin, Joseph Biden. <laughs> I don't know, man, but I, I will report later. Okay, see you, ciao. So that's how I think it is. So, but you know that if the Americans want something, everybody's bowing and take their pants off and ready to get it. So it's good that at least these guys are uh, talking a little bit uh, more often, two times. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.